So this is our first trip pulling the uh, Mallard M185. We're actually going up above Kennedy Meadows. Uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, uh, doing a trip with the kids. Hello. Hi. Hi. This Hi. trip is uh, kind of the maiden voyage of our, of our little camper here. Um, we're actually towing this uh, using a, a Toyota 4Runner. Uh, Toyota 4Runner is rated up to 5,000 pounds. The Mallard uh, M1, uh, M185 is uh, dry weight, uh, 3,500 pounds. Uh, we do we did load her up uh, with water and uh, got a few other things. We'll go ahead and do a bit of a video tour uh, later on. But uh, she seems to be doing uh, doing okay with all this. Uh, some of it's just uh, you know low low gear uphill. Uh, everything's doing just fine though. But so uh, it's gonna be a great camping trip. You know, one of the really cool things that we had added to, uh, to our particular trailer, uh, it was uh, pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. And so what we did was we actually added it up here, and so it transmits a, a video signal over 2.4 gigahertz. And the way that's actually set up is power is received uh, from the, uh, the headlights. So as long as you have the headlights on, the camera receives power. And what this actually does is it gives you a, a, a live video feed from the back of the trailer. And as long as you have it tilted high enough up, this actually doubles as our rear view mirror. And so um, I don't necessarily have to have the, wind, the mirror extenders on the sides. It, it, it would probably help out a little bit if I get those eventually. But um, this is a wide enough angle. I can still see things off, off, off to the sides. Um, I can see the cars in the distances. And so especially on mountain trains like this, I can see if a car is behind me. Uh, makes it pretty handy because I know a lot of people really uh, get irritated when they're, uh, uh, you know, when they're behind a trailer that's moving really slow up a hill, up a hill like this. But, um, the other thing about towing with a, a Toyota 4Runner like this is is really learning how to, how to tow with it. So what we also got is we got a, a scan gauge um, on here. And so what we're doing here is I'm, I'm monitoring the uh, average miles per gallon, but I'm also monitoring the transmission temperature, uh, the load on the actual engine, and then this is also the uh, the temperature of the, uh, of the water coolant of the actual engine. And then whenever we're actually towing, you always switch over to, a, to S mode. I don't use uh, the D mode. And so uh, you don't always, you don't want to go uh, past uh, fourth gear uh, because if you go past fourth gear, what it does is it unlocks a part of the transmission, which is technically like an overdrive. And what it does is it actually makes the transmission work a little too hard and that brings, brings the temperature up too high and it stresses the transmission out too hard. So um, the Toyota Ford Runner does a pretty good job with, with towing capacities like this as long as you don't run too high of a gear ratio. Um, so, especially like this, you know, second, third gear, uh, I, I can do just fine. Just have to make sure it's okay to run the RPMs up higher um, in, in order to be able to not lug the engine, and it also doesn't tax the transmission as hard. Okay, all set up here. Got all leveled out and all primed and everything. Even got the awning up. So, pretty, uh, pretty awesome, pretty easy to do. But, uh, some of the cool things uh, we've uh, we've noticed about uh, um, about this particular unit is uh, the storage space. So some of the various videos that we, that we got to see around, obviously the stuff up here up, up top, you got the media center, you know, the TV can go right there and everything. Uh, the big, huge, full-size fridge, which is uh, really, really cool because you can actually get a uh, like a full gallon of milk or something like that in there and everything. And a uh, big freezer up on the top and... Obviously the full range. The uh, the range actually uh, vents out uh, to outside. So uh, this uh, this little vent right there it actually uh, vents to outside. So if you're cooking in something like in here, it actually vents to outside. You don't have to worry too much about that. The uh, underneath here is uh, is storage. So that's something that uh, didn't really get to see in any of the uh, the walkthroughs from uh, the other dealers and whatnot. And then uh, this one too it also has the same uh, same storage. But there's also another one underneath the bed here another big storage bin here so we don't have anything loaded into this or not but um, LED lighting throughout um, one of the things we did also notice is LED lighting throughout on the inside but there some of the lights on the outside for example this light up here on the front is really handy to be able to kick on to be able to help out with uh, with working on the like the hitch and everything, but it is not actually LED. So um, I'm actually gonna be changing that out because I'm worried about somebody just walking up and just turning the light on and uh, and just draining the battery. And uh, the light's on the back side of the trailer as well. Uh, we also uh, pop the cover off and notice that uh, they're incandescent as well. So 
I'm going to be changing those out as well. But, uh, there's the uh, the backup camera that I indicated before. So uh, it seems to work out pretty well. Again, just tilt it up so that way you uh, can double that as a uh, rear view mirror. And that uh, seems to work out pretty well. So in addition, obviously, this is something that you may not have, uh, may not have thought about, but uh, the 12 volt plug that's usually f set up for uh, for the TVs, bring a uh, bring a bring a, a USB charger and plug that in. So even if you're boondocking or just you don't have a uh, you don't have solar power, but you're, you at least have the battery power, you at least turn around and you can charge your uh, charge your phone for whatever reason uh, that you may need. So something else I did add, I added a pop up plate, and I also have another one for uh, for tissues. I'm gonna be adding on as well. But, uh, but yeah, this is a really nice camper in my opinion. You know, to be perfectly honest, the uh, we did a lot of research on uh, on trailers uh, of this particular class with the uh, with the bunkhouse and everything, and uh, I honestly had my sights set on the uh, on the Jayco uh, J Flight series, uh, the, uh, the BH. Oh, good grief! I forgot what the actual model was, but the uh, the J Flight uh, series uh, one. Um, but uh, doing a lot of the research and whatnot, actually going to uh, the actual camping world and uh, checking out and actually viewing and seeing various uh, various ones of the same class and everything. And seeing the differences and then doing uh, some follow-on research afterwards and one of the reasons why we actually like these I'll go ahead and review some of the reasons so um, the uh, the big countertop surface so um, obviously because of the uh, um, limited space but the uh, the cutting boards that kind of goes over the, the, the bigger enlarged uh, um, sinks the uh, the nice things like like this for example and then the other things I was researching on some of the some of the cooktops for example on some of the like the Coleman's even the J flights for some reason they have they have the knobs up here on the top right where you're cooking. It just did not make any sense. It's like, why don't, why don't they have them out of the way so you're not going to end up worrying about burning your hands or, or end up cooking the knobs? And it's, it's just little things like that. Um, and the full-size fridge was one of the huge things for us because it's like, why would you have a really tiny little fridge. Yes, we, we may have gave, gave up just a little bit of storage space, but at the same time, we've also, you know, you got in the storage space underneath the beds, underneath the uh, underneath the table. The other big thing about this, we, we looked at the, specifically at the Coleman, which has the removable table, but the problem was you can't use the table anywhere else. This table here, it actually detaches from the wall. They get the little clips uh, that actually attaches it to the wall here. Uh, and then you have this little seat belt for, for, during transport, but these legs also fold up. But this is a removable table, so I can take this outside, and I can still use this outside. So I have the propane hookup on the back of the trailer, and I can use this outside of the trailer. So it's, it's just these, some of these little things that really kind of added up for us. Um, the, big, uh, the big big space underneath the sink for a larger size trash can, for example. So it's just, uh, again, reviewing some of the other, some of everything, it's just, that, those kind of really stacked up. And there was one thing that we, that was like, that kind of stuck out here that we didn't, didn't have on this that some of the other ones uh, did have that I'll show you though. Some of the other ones that I really liked, it had storage right above the bed. And this is like the, the one thing that, that I just, that we, that this, this one just didn't have. But honestly, it's like some of the, all the other features kind of, over uh, outweighed the uh, the the downside, and the reality is, the first trip that we actually use this, I throw my coats up there. It's perfect. So it's like I don't do I, do I didn't necessarily need that you know extra stuff up there. Plus, when I actually sat up, I was worried about hitting my head if there was anything bigger up there anyway. So it worked out. So I'll show some of that other stuff outside as well. So this was one of the big selling points for us was on the back left hand side is this extra little door that's on the side. Well, what is this extra little door here for? Well, this door opens up and it gets you into the lower bunk area. And on, you can get access underneath this little space right here. And I was doing research again on the J Flight series. And that's actually where some of the water tanks are. Here, they move the water tanks. The water tanks are up closer to, under, like, underneath the uh, the bed and everything like that. There's also actually underneath uh, part of the undercarriage. But here, the whole thing lifts up, and then I can hook it into a pin. And then look at this. I fit all this extra storage space. I can put, like, a barbecue back here, like a full-sized or a bigger-sized one. Or I can put the kids' bicycles back here. There's all kinds of stuff I can, I can put back here for storage space. And then when I get right up to the site, I can just go ahead and take it all out and then and go for it. There's it's, it's strut assisted as well, so the thing will stay up there. But I also have a little hook, so I just lock it into place, 
and then that's all it's all set so it's just lots of storage space to we will work with and then I just drop it back down and then we're ready to go so that was one of the huge things for us it's like we can kids take the kids bicycles with us why would we not do that um, and then the other thing we, we noticed it was just it was like it's just, it was some minor things but they have a in addition to your standard city water connection and your fresh water fill but they have a black water flush and so doing research figuring out hey people usually take the hose run it through the camper and then flush it out through the through the toilet but this right here allows us to just hook up the the hose turn it on and it literally just starts flushing it from the black uh, tank and then it just comes out through through the hose and we did our first flush out and you, you we turn it on and you could hear the water sloshing around and just flushing it all out and it made cleaning so simple it was it was it was stupid simple actually with this and so I'm really really impressed with how easy that was so just by having this but doing a lot of the research on some of the other ones a lot of them the other ones don't have it and it's a royal pain in the butt to try to add it yourself so just amazing um, underneath everything it's an enclosed underbelly and doing some of the other research as well because it's an under an enclosed underbelly and because they have some of the ducting actually running underneath it actually helps warm up some of the the tanks as well it helps warm some, some of the uh, the actual water tanks so it helps prevent some of the some of the freezing so it can actually handle some of the lower temperatures now i'm not sure how much lower it can go uh, but um, at the same time it's just like hey you're you're camping as long as you're running the furnace you know y you can handle a, a little bit more so it's like my goodness this 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 just seems like a like a better option especially when the uh, when the price point is roughly the same as the others so why not this is a better all-around build in my opinion so anyway this was the review of the mallard m 185